And we have more news concerning Virgil Abloh, some good news actually concerning some Futura Dunk Lows that were previewed a very, very, very long time ago. Now, me personally, me, me personally, I would like to say that I played some part in this Virgil Abloh and Futura connection. Now, I know it's a bit far-fetched. I know people will laugh at me and think I'm absolutely talking out my ass, but I really do think um, I played a little, a little, a little game in them kind of getting together. And the reason why I say that is because when I was working at this really cool online um online fashion learning platform i was in charge of putting together the streetwear course which i've obviously spoken about and featured on my youtube channel and i've spoken about on a podcast a few times and me together with another guy we were basically in charge of co-producing that that program and we essentially you know went out and reached out to um we went out and reached out to all of the lecturers i did anyway in terms of signing them up and making sure they wanted to be on board um and with that, we were able to basically fill up the, the, the program around Virgil because at the time Virgil wasn't really comfortable with being the lead kind of lecturer or the kind of curator of the program because at the time, back then, Virgil wasn't really well regarded in streetwear. People kind of felt like he was a bit of a poser. They kind of felt like he didn't know what he was doing. It was a bit lame. There was a bit of a weird thing around Virgil around that time. So he kind of didn't really want to pursue it. But also, I imagine, at the time too, he was also probably thinking about his transition into high fashion but he didn't want to do it too quickly and he didn't want to come across like he was just like a culture vulture like he was just taking from the from the streetwear scene taking all the juice and then running off to the fashion people like most people do in it when they want to go when they want to kind of pop over there because i guess you know there's loads of girls and there's loads of money over on the fashion side more so than streetwear but anyway that aside um we were able to fill in the course with loads of really great people and i guess virgil's shyness or aversion to being the face of the program was actually a good thing in the end because what ended up happening we ended up having a far stronger course because we had loads of people who probably he felt like and i felt like at the time could lead the course if they wanted to they could be the main curators because they had such heavy rep in the scene they were so well regarded they had incredible cv they done great work back in the day with their own brands or brands that they were currently running and they just almost smashed it one of the main people that was also included in there who was a guest lecturer and also a a tutor for some of the brands was somebody like kyle eng who now has brain dead is absolutely doing great things there so you can just imagine the caliber of people that were designing there and one of the people one of the people that was really there that I kind of worked on to get involved in was Rob Cristofaro, who was, if you're not familiar with, the founder of A Life, the legendary uh, brand. I mean, I'm not sure if you're around, if you know it, uh, brand, A Life brand. I'm not sure if you oh, are aware of it, but the legendary New York brand that was around the time when, you know, a New York thing was out and stuff. And just a legendary, I would say, not even a brand, I would say it's maybe more of a it's more of a platform to express ideas because he does so many different things from terms of hosting parties to doing pop-ups to doing collaboration clothing it's all included right music it's all kind of part of the brand and rob has always been incredibly inspiring i thought to me especially how he kind of conducts himself and kind of keeps himself to himself and just does really cool and interesting work and he's intrinsically and in, in my opinion like 100 percent new york everything that he does the way he presents himself the art that he does the graffiti that he endorses it's all 100 percent new york and um i ended up getting him involved in the program i had to persuade him quite vigorously to get involved he didn't have any prior relationship with virgil beforehand and they ended up actually getting along really really well like he flew him out to the show they did the collaboration after the fact um virgil and rob and then i'm assuming this is me stretching here now i'm assuming that that relationship with rob also led with virgil then hanging out with futura because rob and futura rob rob from a life and futura are really close and they also you know really close, but they came up at the same time so they kind of got a real good connection in terms of uh, being in the scene at the same time especially with doing graffiti and whatnot and i felt like that connection that i initially made between virgil and rob was the reason why futura ended up getting together with virgil now this could be completely wrong i could be completely talking out my ass but i like that story i like that story for me because i don't usually claim things i don't usually 
come, come out there and say anything that I've done or boast about the things that I've kind of achieved or whatnot, except for the DJing stuff, because I still think that's something that if I do on my own and I succeed, if when I succeed, it's going to be monumental because it's still one of the most hardest professions to make it out there in music or in general, I think in culture, it's really difficult to make it. So if I can make it, I'm going to be talking out there when I can make it. Sorry, I'll be talking about it forever. But the Virgil and Futura connection, I feel like is amazing. And if I feel like I played any small part in it, I'm really chuffed and grateful because the finished product of it, outside of what I did in terms of just sending some emails or whatnot, is absolutely incredible. Really, really well done. Especially when you consider Futura's legacy when it comes to dunks. Um, what are they called again? Were they called flumes? Was that what they called? Flumes. Futura, uh, Futura Dunk High. Was it Flume? What was it again? Is it Flume? Or am I mistaken? Is it Flum? Do you remember these from back in the day? Futura, um, Futura Laboratory Dunks. So he's got an incredible legacy when it comes to dunks. I remember these because these were the Livestrong ones that are actually sold in the store I used to work in called 1948 in Shoreditch. A little trendy sneaker store that unfortunately has closed down, which should reopen in some days. That's, this is the, in some guys, this is the best time for a store like, you know, 1948 to exist in, I reckon, especially with all the activations and stuff that go around Nike now at the moment they're a lot more social media friendly they're a lot more I feel like they're, they're, they're a lot less stuffy and uptight they seem to be a little bit more carefree in terms of who they're sponsoring who they're kind of um who they're seeding product to you know there's conversations around inclusivity diversity representation blah 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 this is a perfect time for 1948 to come back around hopefully it does in some way shape or form because that store was fucking cool man it was a really cool hangout spot as well to meet and do new and interesting different people but anyway i remember the live strong um futurists because they were that was around the time that i was working at the store they weren't sold at the store but i remember that was around the same sort of time that they existed but these um these ones, the FL with all the money uh, notes kind of printed on them were an absolute iconic dunk from back in the day. I'm actually surprised considering all the hysteria over dunks and Nike essentially, you know, bleed, you know, bending over themselves to release every single hype dunk that came out. I'm surprised did, did these haven't come out either, to be honest. But maybe they're trying to, um, you know, maintain the resale value of these because there's a little bit of a double dipping involved in the industry i don't really know who knows i'm just talking about my ass but anyway the dunk loads themselves look incredible they basically build upon what virgil did with his dunks that he released a few what a couple of years ago which now look far better than they they did now they look far better now than they did when they came out the ones that had all different sort of colors and combinations i still don't understand his idea around the different colors and combinations and why he did them the way he did them but still i thought the um the final product was really well done i actually like that i see more people wearing those dunks than i see people kind of reselling them they still resell for high amounts but i see a, i've even seen somebody wear the black and silver ones those dunk lows you remember those ones virtual ablo dunk low black silver those are probably the best the best ones in the whole range apart from maybe some of the white and gray ones you know what i mean um the ones that were kind of whitish and gray but i thought these black and silvers were absolutely phenomenal and then maybe the other second great ones are probably these ones that are like white with silver and then there's another pair that's got this sort of like makeup where it's like white gray and there's another one where it's like kind of a suede on the upper instead those colors are really nice too but the obviously the standout one is these so i've even seen one person wearing these out loud you know in real life they could be fake who cares but the fact that some people are wearing them is fucking incredible and it goes to show how how virgil was able to somehow uh, that's just have another talent he did he had that doesn't get spoken about a lot when it came to sneakers especially he had the ability to make things that people are actually wearing to wear or kind of show off um which is really cool um, I don't know how he did that. Really, really did that really, really well. Especially when you can think about it. When I think about it, when I think about Virgil, I don't really think of a sneakerhead. I think more of a kind of a, of an ideas guy. But for some reason, he's able to kind of work it out because I think sneakerheads like Kanye, who's, I would say, more of a sneakerhead, it would make more sense why he kind of gets how to make desirable product because he always desired, you know, Jordans for a certain, certain extent. But I felt like Virgil just always desired kind of being involved. He desired kind of making things and creating a world, not just making a singular product. But I think when you're an adamant sneakerhead, like you look at people like Ronnie Faye and the Joe Fresh Goods guys, like it's no surprise they 
make great sneaker collaborations because they're always obsessed with fucking you know the minute detail of sneakers like i am in terms of midsoles and foxings and you know outsoles and eyelets and stuff and you know mud guards and flipping what material to use do you use new bug do you use suede do you use mesh do you use patent do you use smooth leather you know all these kind of things i'm kind of curious about but then for some reason Virgil wasn't curious about I, I, not, to not at that obsessive level but you're still able to perform at the highest level in terms of ch churning out these colorways that just all smashed it like every single one was a 9 to 10 out of 10 every single one it's not even it's not even fair how good he was at doing those things man but yeah so the dunk lows that Virgil put together were the same sort of motif for the other ones so he's got the safety harness strap things which I just realized aren't actually to say I thought they were just permanently put on but I guess they're actually laced as well so if you want you could just lace them up or take them off which is quite cool but I do like them how they're kind of put on top of them I think it kind of gives them an extra layer and kind of makes them look far more interesting than the regular dunk um so that's pretty nice they have the nylon tongue on there which i am always a bad fan of the nylon with the mesh tongue on there i'm not sure what these little stains are on the little mudguardy bit the little white yellow stains not sure if that's an effect or if that's underneath the actual bit. oh okay it's a it's a sort of what is it what would you call it it's a sort of um effect that you get from spray painting so that's been applied on the whites as well which make them look a bit more vintage but then on the reds you kind of see the color a little bit more Oh, it's not actually a nylon. The tongue isn't foam, but it's leather. Interesting. Maybe that might help with the shape when you have when you have it on your foot. That's not, that's the one of the sly annoying things with Nike Dunk Lows I've found. Maybe it, you get it as well with highs. I'm not really too sure, but I know when you wear Dunk Lows that aren't SBs and the tongue is nylon or whatever, right underneath, it can slip around a lot. And I've never really been a big fan of putting my eye, my laces through the little slit on top of the tongue. I think it always looks a bit, you know, a little bit weird personally for me. Um, but if you don't do that, then the tongue always kind of slides around all over the place. But then the foam tongue is usually the standout thing in my opinion. So it's a bit of a hard thing to kind of balance. But those, these Futuras um, and Nike, Virgil Dunk Lows, anyway, to kind of c conclude this because I keep rambling. Oh, the, the outsole bloody oh is absolutely amazing i just realized it's all flipping see-through i see soul this is the pinnacle this kind of represents to me something that's you know only someone that was part of the culture and knows what's up would know about because there was a period in time when i was buying shoes in the early 2000s and whatnot when some of the best releases or some of the best limited edition especially the friends and family ones they always came with some sort of icy soul i guess that was the version of that was maybe the equivalent of having your brand named in um what do you name it? your brand named uh sort of like stitched on the upper of the shoe or your brand name stitched on the tongue or maybe um the insole change it was like kind of it was a little extra feature that not every not a lot of people got it was something that was only kind of reserved for the top upper echelons so with this outsole um detail here with i guess what this what does it say it says futura oh if it, oh wow it says futura and ablo that's amazing so i'm assuming that's futura's hand style and there's virgil's hand style written on the bottom of the shoe which is fucking incredible so these are definitely going to go for a lot of money anyway regardless but the fact that they've got those at the bottom is absolutely insane i've just seen that um so um they're saying here for courtesy of hypebeast that these are going to be released on virgil's ablo's birthday which is a rumor now but this is pretty cool it says here, um, thankfully, rumor has it that the long-awaited Off-White Futura Dunk Low collection could actually be launching on a late great designer's birthday, which is on September the 30th. It would be nice to see if people celebrate it online and stuff and kind of honor his legacy by just, I might actually do actually by doing like a marathon and watching loads of content concerning um, Virgil Abloh and stuff and just talking about, you know, some great memories that I might have from my brief time meeting the guy. And it says, oh, look, Sky Galati is the one that posted the actual picture itself. Okay, cool that's another person i tried to get involved on, on the course but he kind of declined it continued here says the two-piece collection was first teased during paris fashion week in 2019 mamma mia one iteration of the inspired um by the university of north carolina tar heels and the other one draws inspiration from the syracuse orangeman two powerhouse institutions when it comes to ncs ncaa basketball so the, the tie there is incredible impeccable futurist signature graffiti style is seen with a spray paint effects that show on the collars are quarters and toe box on the uppers as well as through the dunk low lettering 
Um, like many have Ablo's past dunks, the laces are doubled here once again, and both pairs are styled with an extra set that's presented in bold orange. Expect more information around the release to arrive in the coming weeks. So that's incredible news to hear for those of you who care about that kind of stuff. And I do really care, so let's try and see if we're able to get them when they do drop.